Okay. Um, and um, if someone, I guess you can hear me okay because you sent a chat to the box. Great. So we'll start the presentation. This is the CMMC overview. And this is tailored for security professionals and, and the, the main things that I think security professionals need to know about CMMC. The, um, the, 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 one of the reasons we're doing this is because America spends billions of dollars developing weapon systems. And it's taken years to develop these weapon systems and, and all the, the different um, technologies that are needed. And other countries shortcut that process by stealing the intellectual property that we use um, to create our weapon systems. So um, this is an example. Um, one of these is the America F-35 Joint Strike Fighter and the other one is built by another country. Um, which one is the American version? Uh, can y'all unmute and some some I tell tell me which is the American version? Both. Not correct. One is built by another country. Oh, one's built by China. Which one? Uh, Shang Xinyang. The top picture or the bottom picture? Top picture. The top picture, you're correct. Uh, because the US Air Force logo is on the bottom picture. And, uh, but other than that, they're pretty close. And, and China was able to accomplish this, you know, building this so quickly because they were able to steal the technology um, on how the airplanes are built. And the, the, you hear in the news when there's, when there's classified information that's stolen, um, you, you tend to hear that in the news, um, but actually that's, you know, doesn't happen a whole lot. Um, the, the classified systems are actually protected pretty well, and that's usually like a human did something um, that, that took the classified information and gave it to the foreign adversary. But there's tons of theft from non-classified data from military contractors. And this is not necessarily from a human you know, giving the adversary the information. This is them um, going through the cyber defenses to get the information. And it's the supply chain um, because a lot of this data um, that's not classified isn't being protected as well as it should be. And that's what's allowing the foreign adversaries to steal it. So, so most of the classified information because it's protected so well, it, it is a human, you know, giving that information to the foreign adversary when the classified data gets stolen. But for the unclassified data, um, it's, it's, they're able to use um, tools and techniques in order to extract the data. And that's where a, a vast majority of the data is, is leaving um, the, the country. And so you know, an example is the company I work for, you know, we're, we're building uh, army um, propellants. This is for uh, propellants for, the, for weapon systems. And all of this data is unclassified. Everything that we're doing um, to build this army ammunition plant, no, no classified data on there. And of course, we talk about on our website what we're doing. And another example is missile silos. And so again, this is public information on our public facing website that we're doing um, a construction of underground nuclear weapons storage and handling facilities at the FE Warren uh, base in Cheyenne, Wyoming. So this just an example of you know two weapon systems projects that we're doing, but these are totally unclassified projects that we're working on. And so you know, there is expectations of the government for how we're protecting the data, but um, but this is this is where the big shortcoming has been, and that's why the, the Department of Defense feels like they need to implement a more formal program on how to protect the data. And so that is what the goal of the CMMC project is. And this is the cybersecurity maturity model certification is what it stands for. And this is actually not coming from the IT department at the Pentagon. This is coming from the supply chain um, section of the Pentagon. And so the, um, the, the Office of the Undersecretary of Defense for Acquisition and Sustainment is actually putting the certification model in place to help protect government data in the supply chain. So their goal is they, they don't want, if you get a you know, you know, if you need to, if you're building an uh, airplane and you need a component built for that airplane, they don't want you to send the drawings for the entire airplane to the subcontractor that's going to build a component for you. 
they want you to only send the information that's required. And, and that's, it takes effort for, for the um, contractor to, to carve out the work and only send the information that's required to do the, the task at hand. But that is a major part of CMMC is having you segment your data and only provide to subcontractors the exact data that they need. And they also want you to make sure your subcontractors are protecting the data too. So the same level that you as a prime contractor are protecting the data, there's an expectation that the subcontractor is protecting it the same way. And so it's, it's been, um, there's been some things in place over the evolution through the years. And so there's um, something called CUI that's a, that's a new um, um, data, um, I can't think of the word, classification. How, how do you classify the data? If you've heard of OUO, um, official use only, or if you've heard of, it was replaced with FOUO for official use only. Um, but those were kind of broad terms. And that, that's where we started. And now we're at CUI and it has um, international traffic and arms regulation and export controlled information. And so that means basically only Americans can see it. And that's, that's basically the control. Only, only Americans or, or US persons, sorry, can see the data. But how you protect it's not defined. They just say, you know, only US persons can see it. So then they came out with a standard that um, and said, okay, for NIST 800-171, NIST is a government agency that publishes um, standards. And so the Department of Defense said, well, you have to follow NIST 800-171 uh, when you're protecting our data. And, but it's on the honor system. And so you self-attest, hey, I, I am following NIST um, 800-171. And then they came out with a clause for a contract and um, the, the DFAR means Defense Federal Acquisition Register. And they came out with the clause um, 252.204.712. And that ones that, re that requires you contractually to do the NIST 800-171 and they can come choose to audit you um, on whether you're meeting it or not. But the problem is the Department of Defense doesn't have a lot of auditors. They don't have a lot of people that can do this. So our company has been audited one time against this standard. And, um, and that's just, you know, they just don't have enough people to go around or enough budget or enough experts to go around to, to audit all the companies. And so what, what the, this new CMMC is, is a new DFAR requirement that was put into the first contracts this year. And it was just a handful of contracts this year. It's going to grow to, to, to um, more next year and then more the year after. And this is where the CMMC accreditation comes in. And the difference from what's been done in the past is um, third parties will be coming in to, to assess you with the CMMC accreditation. So instead of the U.S. government doing it, like they did with the 800-171, with CMMC, you will hire a third party to come in and do the assessment. And then that third party will tell the U.S. government how you did. So that's, that's, that's just the evolution of how we got to, to where we are now. There's five different levels of CMMC, and the level depends on the type of data that you're going to be um, working with. And so if you just have commercial off-the-shelf projects, things you're just buying, there is no CMMC requirement for that. And that's the far left-hand side of the graph. Um, for level one, this is if you're going to receive an RFP that has um, special data. And we tracked it there I'm trying to see where that's coming from. We also created these investigations. Okay. So for level one, this is when you're going to be building something for, for, for the government or doing something, you know, um, doing something that's not off the shelf. And so you're going to get a, um, a contract saying these are our contract requirements and this is what we need you to do to fulfill those requirements. That's what level one is. And that is uh, federal contract information. For level three, this is the controlled unclassified information um, that's OUO, FOUO, export control, uh, weapon systems type stuff. Um, actually, weapon systems comes in level four. Um, but level three is, is the, um, the data that the government wants the minimum protections for. And then level four and five is for the weapon systems. And so that's the, the different levels of, um, of data. So it depends on the data you're going to have as to the protections and, and the CMMC level of certification that you have to achieve. 
And so for the accreditation process, level one is a questionnaire um, that you have to fill out. There's 17 controls you have to meet. And then um, an, an assessor will, will look at the answers to your questions and, and give you a level one. And then um, there's up to a year for someone, the, the government will send someone to come to your company uh, within a year to, to validate that you meet the level one controls. For level three, four, and five, you have to hire a company to come in and do an assessment of you. And you have to pass that assessment before you're given the level three, four, or five um, approval to operate. And th these are the, the Department of Defense estimates of the number of companies that are going to receive these accreditations. So they're anticipating 28,000 will receive a level one, and they're anticipating 14,000 will get the level three. And um, well, about 50 to 60 companies will get the level four and level five. So again, level four and level five is not classified. So when I say weapon systems, that doesn't mean classified. I gave you examples earlier in the presentation of weapon systems work my company's doing that's not classified. So, um, so again, it's, it's unclassified data, but it still has to do with weapon systems. And for level two, um, the, the level two is companies that tried to get to a level three and didn't make it. And so they, they attempted to get to a level three and those companies would be awarded a level two. It doesn't mean that you can see the data that's required for a level three, but it shows that you tried. And um, you know, there's companies that might be at a level one and tell you, hey, we intend to be a level three. Well, they probably don't. Um, otherwise they wouldn't have done the level one. Whereas if someone does a level two, that shows you that they tried, but there was a gap and they're going to tell you that you know, they're trying to fill that gap. The important thing with CMMC to remember is you don't have to be at the level during the proposal phase. You have to be at the level to do the work. And so you can actually not be a level three and submit a proposal to do the work while you still work on closing your gaps to achieve a level three. But if they make the award and your company wins the award, you have to be at the level three in order to, to, to do the award, to do the work. And some procurements, you know, it could take six months, some takes nine months. So, so it does take a while uh, for you to get an RFP and see what level you need to be at. And then there's time where you prepare your proposal and then there's time for the government to evaluate the proposal. There may even be a protest period. So there is, a, there is a time gap where companies do have a chance to, to, to get up to the certain level. This is very important when you're talking about subcontracts, because if you're a company like, like my company and, and we bid on level three work, again, we typically don't do everything ourselves. We subcontract things to other companies. And so we're going to have to um, divide up the information. And some of the subcontractors will not need a, a certification at all. Some will need a level one and some will need a level three. And um, so as we look for subcontractors, you know, of course, it's, it's the least risky if we can find people that are already at a level three. Um, but if they're not, you know, we, we need to have confidence that if they claim they're going to get there and they can demonstrate that they're working on it. And we can include them as a subcontractor in our proposal, even though they don't have a level three yet. Um, and and you know, with their assurances that they're going to get there by the time the contract's awarded. So, um, so that's, that's an important differentiation. You have to be at the level at the time of award, not at the time of proposal. Um, for the certification process, <coughs> again, on level one, that's a questionnaire that you fill out. And you can engage something called a registered provider organization in order to help you with the questionnaire and the, the 17 controls to help determine if you're meeting those controls or what you need to do to meet those controls. And then um, uh, someone will review your responses and then um, you'll have a site visit within 365 days. And then the Department of Defense will place the CMMC level in the supplier performance risk system. And for the level three, four or five, uh, a DOD contractor can engage a registered provider organization, an RPO. We're going to talk about that in a minute. And that's the company that helps you prepare for the CMMC assessment. So they come in and they, they look at you and tell you if you're ready and tell you what gaps you have. And then when um, you get those gaps filled, you can hire a, a different company that actually does the accreditation for you. And that's called a C3PAO. 
and that is the Certified Third Party Assessor Organization. And this has to, have to be two different companies. You can't use the same company to do your gap analysis that you do to do your actual assessment. assessment. It has to be two different companies. And then if you pass, then the C3PA will provide a copy of that to your CMMC level to the Department of Defense and that's placed in the supplier uh, performance risk system. Uh, one, of, one of the gaps we have right now is that um, we can't look inside the supplier performance risk system. And so we have to rely on a subcontractor telling us what their CMMC rating is. We currently don't have a way to look it up ourselves. Um, hopefully when, when CMC gets a little bit more mature, that, that'll, be, that'll be changed. But for, for right now, we just have to trust somebody when they tell us what they are. This is during the proposal phase. Now, when the award is actually made and you say, okay, these are the subcontractors I'm planning to use, the government will tell you at time of award, oh, by the way, company B didn't get their level three certification. And, um, but, but you know, right now, the, you, the way that things are based right now, it's kind of, we just have to go with what our subcontractors are telling us. Um, we, we don't have a way to independently verify it. Um, the government can verify it, but, but us as a subcontractor can't. But hopefully that, that's a gap that'll they'll figure out a way to get around um, to make that better. So uh, a third party um, nonprofit accreditation body was formed as because the Department of Defense didn't want to manage all this themselves. So the Department of Defense is publishing like the kind of the requirements that you get a certification, but they're not defining what the certification is. And so there's a third party um, company that was formed, a nonprofit that was formed, and this is the company that's putting together um, how to do the assessments and how to, how to determine if you're meeting the, again, it's based on the NIST controls, but they've also added um, some controls too. It's not 100% NIST controls, they've added some beyond the NIST controls too. And this agency is the one that has the program to um, get the companies that are doing the assessments and getting the companies that are doing the preparation or the gap analysis and getting the certification test put in place um, for, for the people to pass it. So this is the, the main website. It's called the CMMC Accreditation Body or CMMC AB. And we're gonna go through um, some of the different things um, that they have available on their website. And so um, this has a list of the C3PAO, which is the assessors. Um, this is this companies that have the assessors. And then the next block is actual assessors themselves. Uh, the next circle is the registered provider organizations. These are the ones that do the gap analysis for you. And then the next block is the registered practitioners themselves. These are the people that, um, that the people that work for the assessor company, I'm sorry, the gap analysis companies that will come to your site. And then um, these are the organizations that are seeking the certification. And then these are the training partners. These are the companies that have the training that you need to take in order to become a registered practitioner or an accessor. And there's also a marketplace link up here. And at the marketplace link, you can find the companies that are, um, that are, that are meet these requirements. So let's go dive a little bit deeper in. So the, the registered provider organization um, the, the block that I've highlighted, these are the companies that will do the gap analysis for you. So they will come in and look at your environment and see if you're meeting the, the um, requirements, meeting the NIST requirements. And again, you could go to the marketplace um, tab and get a list of the registered provider organizations and then you work with them in order to, to put a, a um, agreement in place for them to come in and do a gap analysis for you. And the people that work for the registered provider organizations are called registered practitioners. And so these, these are the people that work for the registered provider organizations. And there's a certification they have to go through. Um, there's, there's training they have to take and there's a test they have to take in order to become a registered practitioner, keep your accreditation up to date. So again, these are the people that come in and do the gap analysis and look at the companies and, and tell them, you know, if, if, if they feel like, um, you know, according to the assessment criteria that's been provided, the, 
this accreditation body has provided use. And um, they're the ones who are supposed to tell you if, if you're ready to go through the certification process. So these, um, the, the registered providers uh, have to pass the commercial background check. They have to complete the online training. They must sign a professional code of conduct. And again, an annual fee that they have to provide. So they need lots of security professionals, you know, in order to do these gap analysis. Because again, these people are also the ones, um, you know, there, there's going to be a lot of preparation that the companies are going to need to do. And so there's going to need to have a lot of RPOs. And this is the kind of the entry level um, to this. This is, this is kind of the easiest one to get because you're just doing the gap analysis. So again, this is the, the registered practitioners, and these are the people that work for the um, registered provider organizations to do the gap analysis. So now we're gonna move on to, the, these are the third party assessor organizations. Again, 3PAO. Um, these are the companies that actually do the accreditation for you. And the people that work for C3PAs, PAOs, are the assessors. And there's different levels of assessors. And so there's four different levels. Um, the entry one is a certified CMMC professional as a member of the team. They're not, a, they're not actually able to, to sign off themselves, but uh, when they send assessors to your company, they send a team of people and they're eligible to be a member of the team. Uh, when they get some more experience, they can then go to the second column where they're certified assessor at level one. And they're able to look at those questionnaires that companies filled out, and they're able to determine based on those questionnaires if a company is able to be given a level one um, certification or not. They're also able to participate um, in the other um, level three ones, again, as a member of a team. Um, the next one over is a level three assessor, and they're able to conduct assessors at the, um, at the level one and the level three. And, and so they have the experience required to actually pass you on the level three certification. And then going up, there's a certified assessor level five, and they're able to, to assess you at level four and level five and say that you passed the criteria to be at the level four and level five. So there's five different positions. Um, there's four on this slide that talks about the assessors, and then the one we talked about previously, that was the registered practitioner, which is, again, the one that does the gap analysis. So, the, you know, this is where they need you know, hundreds and hundreds of people that, that understand um, how to do the gap analysis and how to do the, the assessments in order to help make this program successful. And this is the marketplace where you can go look companies up. And so you can come and see, well, who are the registered provider companies? Who are the registered practitioners? Who are the, uh, the C3PO assessment companies? So you can come to this marketplace and, and look up companies and see uh, who they are. So this is an example from a screenshot of um, the, some C3PAOs. Um, it, it actually lists the company information on here. And then uh, there's more companies now. Um, it changes weekly. Um, but these are, the, these are like three of the companies that are able to do level three assessments. They've completed everything that they need to do in order to, to do a level three certification. And so these companies actually had to be um, approved by the U.S. government. And so the U.S. government agency that came to my company a couple of years ago and did our NIST 800-171 assessment, that same agency is the one that, that did these companies. Uh, but again, with the, with the DOD, they do one assessment of Redspin or one assessment of, of CAST or Kratos, and then these companies are able to go assess other companies. So th this is a way, again, the Department of Defense isn't having to expend all this manpower they expend the manpower getting these commercial companies able to do the assessments. And then these commercial companies will go off and do hundreds of other companies themselves. Um, but this is still a work in progress. It's not, um, it's not you know, 100% ready yet. The training is one of the things that's, 
um, you know, coming out. They've had provisional training um, in the past, and this is for the uh, registered practitioners. But they're they're just coming out now with with the final with the final training, and so you know this is a warning that you know be, be careful that you don't get tricked into paying for classes um, because it wasn't ready yet. The DoD is still working to finalize the course objectives, so someone might tell you they're offering CMC training, but it's just you know it's just kind of what they came up with. It's not the authorized training yet. And um, so the last thing, um, the last town hall I attended, they said October is when they hope to have this training um, out and ready. Um, but you can see that, it's, you know, that the, um, they have the registered provider training out, um, but it's not, it's for the assessors that they don't have the training out yet. And so they're just, there's, again, this is still a program that's under development. And um they have town hall, the CMMC advisory board does have town hall meetings on the last Tuesday of every month um, to get you, give you a, a, a status of where you're at. And they also have replays of previous town halls. And so if you go to the, um, to the CMMC website here, one of the links is um, town halls where you can go and um, hear the previous town hall meetings. And this is a projected rollout from the Department of Defense. They are behind schedule. Um, the Biden administration decided to do a review of the program. And so they put a, put a pause on rolling out any new RFPs. And that, that um, assessment is still underway um, on whether the CMMC program is going to be rolled out the, the way it was designed. And so the Biden administration is, is looking at the whole program top to bottom, and they may make changes in it um, but before it, it rolls out any further. So, so that review is underway. And so there, there haven't been um, any new RFPs uh, because of that. So where they had 15 in fiscal year 2021, they did not achieve that goal um, because um, you know, halfway through the fiscal year, there was an administration change that put a hold on, on rolling out um, anything else for CMMC. So the accreditation board is still working to get the test ready and getting all the assessors ready. Because um, again, the, assess, the, the CMC AB is a separate nonprofit entity, so they're still doing um, their part to get ready for everything. Um, the, the part that's on hold is, is the Department of Defense actually putting um, CMC in new RFPs. They're not doing that right now um, until they decide if they want to change anything as the program was designed under the previous administration. Um, there could be changes um, to, to how they do it. And an example, for instance, is um, with level one. Um, it can be very expensive for a small company to meet level one requirements. And there, you know, there's, there's you know, obviously complaints about that expense. And so one of the big questions is, well, does a level one company actually need you know, an assessor to do that on-site visit? Could they just review the questionnaire only and not have to do the on-site visit. Well, with the previous administration, it was they have to do the on-site visit. Um, there's, a, there's a chance that the current administration could change that and say, we'll take the questionnaire only, and we won't actually require the on-site visit. That's an example of a change that, that the, you know, the, the new administration could do. That would have a huge cost impact on the companies um, that, they're, that are pursuing the level one. That is a tremendous cost impact difference. It's also a tremendous risk difference too. Um, whether you just fill out a questionnaire and you may or may not be doing that stuff. And if you know you're not going to get an on-site assessment, you, know, you, you might not worry about it. But if you, if you know a company is going to come visit you and, and validate you that your answers to your questions are correct, you know, there's going to be a higher level of diligence that you responding correctly and making sure that you're meeting the requirements. So under the, the prior administration, they were adamant that there has to be an on-site review in order to determine companies are meeting the goals properly. And um, but those people aren't there anymore. And so there's a chance with the, with the new administration that that could change. And, um, and there won't be, um, you know, for instance, level one on-site assessments. So, so everything with the program is being reviewed right now. So what I'm presenting, of course, is what the prior administration laid out. And, um, and this was the prior administration's rollout plan. And again, it, it shows, again, the, the, the number, number of companies so again, you know, 895 level one companies rolling up to uh, um, fiscal year 25, 28,000 level one companies. 
And the, these numbers um, are the cumulative as they grow to the right. And, and again, it shows the difference. And, um, and, and, and these are also, again, subcontracts. This is not prime contracts from the government that these counts are. Um, these counts are companies that, that do, this is multiple contracts, I guess is what I'm trying to say. <coughs> the, um, so, so the prime contracts are at the top. And so if you see, for instance, um, in fiscal year 25, they expect to have 479 prime contracts, but they expect to have 47,000 contractors working on those 479 contracts. So that just gives you the, an idea of the tremendous scope that when they award one contract to Lockheed Martin, you know, Lockheed Martin might have um, you know, 150 to 200 subcontractors or more um, doing work for one prime contract. And again, so it's not as much the, the Lucky Martin that they're worried about. It's the Lucky Martin's 200 subcontractors, uh, where a lot of this leakage is taking place at. Okay, so um, we definitely need security professionals, you know, in order to make these things happen. And um, the town hall that I mentioned earlier, if you go to the CMMC advisory board, um, you can see that the, you know, view the town hall videos that have been done in the past. And um, so lots of opportunities for security professionals, lots of need. Uh, for people to come in and do the assessments and for people to, to come in and do the, the readiness gap analysis. So that's the end of my presentation. And um, if anybody wants to take themselves off mute and um, ask a question. Good job, sir. Okay, so we'll do, we have, um, I showed there's 20 participants and I'm one of those. And I think Ryan is too. And so we've got the random number generator. Oops, let me not come up. Let's see, so the random number generator. I think we've got 18 people if we don't count Ryan. One, how about that? Has that been a cord? Has been a cord in attendance? Yes, sir, I am. That's awesome. Ben is the, ben is the winner of the first, um, the first um, prize, which is, let's see. Speaking that of. That is the, uh, Yes, <laughs> the best year prize. <laughs> and um, Ben is the winner of a um, gift certificate to um, a 20 book e voucher for, that's off my screen, No Starch Press, uh, $20. So put Ben a cord in there. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. All right, we have seven more minutes in this track. Any other questions or comments? If anybody wants to share any information they know? Mark, one question I do have for you is, will there be less of a reliance on 800 as as the government transitions to CMMC? Will that be the sole uh, governing requirements body there? Well, that um, it's the primary, um, the, the, the requirements that they have is primarily 800-171, and then they've added 20 additional controls for level three. And so um, I think it's going to remain the primary. Thank you. And this is the, this is the live website. And um, so again, this is where um, it defines, if you want to see the assessor requirements, um, you can come click on the assessment tab on the website and uh, see what the, the requirements are. You go to the marketplace and uh, see the companies that have met the requirements. Um, you can come to the town hall. So the September town hall video is out there. Um, it was a uh, I guess two weeks ago now. Um, no, it was last Tuesday. 
Yeah, Tuesday week ago, so the meeting from the September 28th is out there. You can go back and watch that town hall video. And um, and then you can there's, there's just information about the um, register providers, the assessors. If you come to the marketplace. <laughs> Why it's not coming up. Okay, my computer just decided it doesn't want to work today. Um, this is the website. Again, this is not the Department of Defense. This is an, a, a nonprofit agency that they contracted with to, to come up with the um, accreditation criteria, the training uh, classes that are required. Um, all, all of that is being come up by the CMMC accreditation body is the one for putting all that material together. So this is the marketplace and this is where you can come and say, well, I wanna see you know, how many companies do we have now that are C3PAOs? So these are companies that actually can do the assessments themselves. So now there's four companies that have completed all the steps required to do the assessment itself. Um, if you wanna look for companies to do the, um, the um, the RPO is registered provider organizations. These are the ones that can do the gap analysis. There's 1,977 companies that can do the gap analysis for you. That's the registered provider organizations. So, Lots of information there. And then um, yeah, if you click on the links here, it will tell you what you need to do to become a registered practitioner or tell you what you need to do to become an assessor. Again, the registered practitioners do the gap analysis for you. It has all the information about the, the training that you have to do um, online, this is online training um, for the for the do the, the registered uh, practitioner. And then do an online training, um, sign the code of professional contact, conduct, um, you know, pass all of the all the training, and then you'll get a registration uh, where you can work for a registered provider organization, or you can do gap analysis for other companies. Okay, no other questions? All right, so the next session starts, I believe, at 10.15. Um, no, 10.05, sorry. Um, 10.05 will be streamlining report writing with Mr. Ben Accord. So that's at 10.05. Okay, thanks everyone for attending.